part of Mozart's Symphony No. 29, the late Sir Charles McCarris conducting the Scottish Chamber Orchestra, and one of the shortlisted discs for the 2010 Gramophone Awards. Welcome to this Gramophone podcast with me, James Jolly, and to look at some of the nominations, I'm joined by Rob Cowan. Sad, but also wonderful tribute to a great musician that Sir Charles should be represented on two out of the three orchestral shortlisted discs, that Mozart set and Vorjak tone poems. How do you think we should remember McCarris as a musician? Well, I always think of him as the father of Czech music interpreters, as far as the present generation is concerned. I mean, his records of Janáček, uh, Dvořák, uh, Martinu and Smetana, I've got an honesty about them that, that really, in for me, endears them to me. He doesn't sort of interpret no. it as some people do, He does unfolds he? the music. Yes, there are times when I want a little bit more intervention, imaginative intervention, I could say, from an interpreter. But then I find myself going back to Macaris and thinking, no, this is... This is so honest. You know, I was recently listening to him doing the Elgar Symphonies, the records he made of the Elgar Symphonies, and I'd forgotten just how good they were. Yes. And I went back for the purposes of, of listening for the awards to uh, listen to the Dvorak tone poems that he did with the Czech Phil. I originally reviewed them for the magazine. And their freshness appealed to me all over again. You know, there, there are versions. The, these are versions that I could definitely go back and live with. But I wouldn't. Yes, I wouldn't want to do without Talik, etc., but uh, or Anoncour, but uh, Macaris has got qualities that I think other people haven't got. <laughs> And then in his Mozart, this is the second volume of his late Mozart symphonies. This has 29, 31, 32, 35 and 36. Scottish Chamber Orchestra. In a way, he did something rather special up in Scotland because he was working with modern instruments, but really got that orchestra to play with a kind of period sensibility. That's right. And this is something, funnily enough, uh, we were playing on our, on our breakfast programme just a, a couple of days ago. A recording of Handel that he did with the Prague Symphony Orchestra years and years ago, and exactly the same applied as you said. He was using a, a sort of a, a scholarly approach, very light approach to the music, without uh, using period instruments, and the effect is very, very similar. In fact, some people would would much prefer it because you have that extra it's kind little of best of both the worlds, isn't exactly. it? Exactly, <laughs> you've got that little bit of richness involved, which you obviously like out of the modern instruments, but the lightness of touch, the lightness of the rhythms. And, and these late Mozart uh, recordings, when I say late Mozart recordings, uh, that's how they've turned out, have, have got similar qualities, very buoyant, very lively, very transparent in many respects, beautifully played by the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. And I think if any set of records deserve to be a, a late memorial to Macaris. I think the, the Lynn series of Mozart symphonies is probably that. And the Czech Philharmonic crop up on the third of the orchestral nominations this year, Jerzy Bielorhavik conducting them in Martinu's symphonies five and six, a sort of late, late entry for Martinu year that kind of just missed it. But uh, I, I have to say, I loved exploring Martinu's music last year. I yeah. just think he's such a wonderful oh, composer. Absolutely, especially these two symphonies. I think four, five and six are probably the greatest of the symphonies, and Bela Hlavec has got a real feel for this music. Similar, in a sense, to Macaris, as he doesn't mess about with it. He gives it to you very much as it is, and the Czech Philharmonic play beautifully for him. I think orchestras respect Bela Hlavec enormously because of his deep musicianship and his refusal to tamper with the scores, yeah. and uh, this comes across, in, and they're beautifully recorded as well. Now, that's, that's a good that's year a for superphon. Very good year for superphon, yeah. Right, let's move on to the, the concerto category. An interesting trio here. We've got the Elgar Violin Concerto from Thomas Zietmeyer with Sir Mark Elder and the Halle. Prokofiev Piano Concertos from Freddie Kempf and uh, Andrew Lytton. And what I hope is going to be the start of a Beethoven Piano Concerto series from Till Fellner with Kent Nagano in Montreal. Let's start with that one. I've been, for years, 
wanting to hear him in the Beethoven piano concertos, and I just think this is a terrific record. Well, if you can think in terms of comparing young artists with their great forebears, I'd say that uh, Fellner is the modern Kempf. Uh, Wilhelm Kempf, that is, <laughs> yes. as opposed to Freddie Kempf, Absolutely. who we'll be talking about in a second or two. The elegance of the playing, the clarity of it, uh, a, a sense of rhythm, a sense of style and subtle expressiveness, and a very, very facilitating technique. Beautiful runs in these performances, especially in number four. Again, as we've been saying about these other these other performances, it doesn't uh, mess the music around. And, and yet there is definite individuality to these performances. And uh, Nagano provides very subtle but straightforward accompaniments. Yes, I, I, I mean, I found that interesting because I've never yeah. I've never really warmed to Nagano in kind of what one might call the key Austro-German repertoire. No, I, I haven't him, either. I've always found him a slightly cool... I did like his Mahler 8, I must say. Yeah. Uh, I think I was a bit of, in a bit of a minority there. But the thing is, they've obviously worked together. Absolutely. It sounds like chamber music. going on. It and, is. And the, and the Montreal Orchestra yeah. play fabulously well. Yeah, they well. do, they so, do. So uh, let's hope there's a, a one, two and three well, on the way. deserves it. And I guess one could say the same about the Prokofiev second and third concertos from Freddie Kempf. I mean, you don't generally just record a disc of a yeah. couple of them. I mean, it's it's interesting with these works because you've got, <laughs> I should say, you've got more competition. Of course, you haven't because the uh, the amount of competition with Beethoven piano concertos is enormous. But here, of course, you've got... It's small but very, very it's, impressive, it's, isn't it's it? It's small but impressive. Yes, I like these performances very much and Andrew Lytton, gets uh, very warm and sonorous uh, accompaniments from the Bergen Philharmonic Orchestra. And the sonata number two is is the most romantic of Prokofiev's piano sonatas, which Freddie Kempf plays beautifully. But again, there have been other versions that uh, have been very strong. So I hope it gets somewhere because they're hugely accomplished performances. But we'll wait and see in this one. Now, this is an interesting one, the Elgar Violin Concerto, Thomas Tseyetmeyer with the Halle Orchestra under Sir Mark Elder on the Halle's own label. I think when one, when one goes to recordings of the Elgar Violin Concerto, you either say, is this in the Menuhin tradition or is this in the Salmon's tradition? Now, in a way, Tseyetmeyer is stepping into a tradition, obviously not being an, an English player, but extraordinary performance. Well... This really surprised me, James, I have to be honest. I've always thought of Zetmar as a sort of cerebral player. I've expected him to excel in, in Bartok, in, in late Schumann and, uh, and music like that. And which, I thought, of course, he does. Which he <laughs> does, which he does. Not the Elgar Concerto, the most romantic of violin concertos, deeply personal music and introspective. And in that respect, I suppose, with hindsight, I would have expected him to excel. But um, I didn't expect the performance to be quite as red-blooded as it is. And actually, I know that people have compared it with Salmon's. Um, I find Salmon's has a smaller tone than Zermeyer has here. Wonderful performance, though, Salmon's is. But actually, it's candid emotionalism. I'm more thought of a comparison with the young Menuhin. It's wonderful, uh, wonderful play. He really gets inside the music and gets the spirit of it. The accompanied cadenza in the last movement especially. The slow movement has real nobility of expression and uh, Sir Mark Elder does a wonderful job with the orchestral I mean, score. Elder really has done something extraordinary well, he's now there, he? He's now really a superb Elgar conductor and uh, his contribution to this performance is as strong as Zetmar's, so this is a very strong contender. Yes. I kind of get view. the feeling with Elder that he might sort of be a bit of a, like a Charles McCarris. All of a sudden, we'll suddenly actually realise that this amazing musician is in our midst and we haven't perhaps given him the credit we should have. I heard him recently with the LSO. Astounding play. In, a, in old-fashioned, in the absolutely best sense of the word. That's right. He does, and he gets the odd string portamento going. You know, he's not... He's not uh, 
uh, afraid to wear his heart on his sleeve, which is where his heart should be in Elgar. And uh, all that is very much in evidence in this performance. It's a real partnership, as it is with the Beethoven Concerto CD. So I'm sincerely hoping that this will get somewhere. <laughs>